Hi, in this video today I'm going to show you how you can replace your flexible circuit board that allows the button presses on your DualSense controller, your PlayStation 5 controller. So I've seen these damaged in the past before where liquid has been spilt on the controller and then it sits on these traces here and where this actually meets the main board it causes damage and corrosion. So if you're having problems with your buttons not being pressed properly, it could be a dirt or grease buildup underneath the buttons, in which case then maybe cleaning them will fix it. But if you've spilt something on it, you might need to replace this. So let me show you how to do that. So we need to have a plastic pry tool and a crosshead screwdriver, that's all we need. So to begin with, we need to take off this faceplate. I'm gonna use my nails. If you're uncomfortable using your nails, use the plastic pry tool and I'm just working my way up. I'm not just yanking it from the bottom because it might crease or break here. But you can see once you do that, it separates out and then you can just lift it out from there. You might need to use your pry tool on these bits here to unclip it. This will uncover two screws here and here. We also have two hidden screws under the R1 and the L1 buttons. So we're gonna get our pry tool. We're gonna push down on L2, go under the button here and just lift up like so and do the same on this one here. Obviously make sure your controller is disconnected and turned off from the uh, PlayStation 5. And that will also uncover a screw here and a screw here. So let's undo those four crosshead screws. They're all the same. So you can just put them in a pile together. Right, now we have to remove this back from the front of the controller. So to begin with, try to just force out the back a little bit from the bottom. And I'm just gonna keep a bit of pressure there with my thumb and I'm using my pry tool and I'm just going up here and I'm trying to just open up the catch up here. So you can see that's open there now. And do the same here, open it up at the bottom, keep the pressure on it. Use my pry tool and just open up the catch here. Now, when that's opened up there, we now need to undo these two catches down here. So again, keep the pressure open and then get your pry tool and just undo that catch and gently undo that catch. You can see now that the back wants to come off. It's still fiddly, still feels like you're gonna break something. It's just these bits here. So just keep working it up and eventually it will come off like so. So now we need to gently disconnect the battery. So I'm gonna lift the battery up to make it easier for myself. You might need to just unhook it from this little plastic tab here. So put it towards the middle and gently just pull it out of the connector here, like so. You can always use long nose pliers if you're worried about damaging the connector here, but it pulls in and out really nice and easy. Okay, now we need to undo this screw here. Unfortunately, the controller does have to come apart to uh, get to the, uh, fully apart to get to the this uh, flexible circuit board at the, at the front. So that's undone there now. Now be careful, don't just yank this up because there's a tiny little ribbon cable here. You can use tweezers to remove the ribbon cables. I'm just gonna use my uh, finger and thumb nice and gently. I'm just pulling them out. All of the ribbon cables on here are like friction fit, so there's no lids, they just push in and pull out. So now we can gently remove that along with the microphone and the ribbon cable. We need to remove this ribbon cable up here. So again, use tweezers or I'm just working it out like so. And we need to remove this ribbon cable here. So I'm just pulling that out. This is for the adaptive triggers and the L1 and R1 up the top. Right, so there are the ribbon cables out there and we've got one more ribbon cable down here. I'm just gonna gently pinch that and work that loose. So there are all the ribbon cables undone. Now, put a little bit of pressure on your thumbsticks. Oh, it's wanting to come out already, but if you have a look, we have a little black catch just here. So if we put pressure on this thumbstick here and push the catch to the side, you will see the circuit board will come out. We also have another little catch down on this bit here. You can hear it. So again, if you put pressure on that thumbstick, it will come out. Now we are attached to the haptic feedback via the wires. So just uh, gently do that. Don't yank it because you'll break the wires. Right, we've got four more screws to undo. This one here. This one here, the two silver ones. Keep those separate because they're longer and different than the other screws. And we have a black screw here and a black screw here. So let's undo all of them. And just to show you, this here is where the ribbon cable, the flexible ribbon cable, sits on the board here. So it's just pressure that keeps them both together. 
Now, when those four screws are undone, this whole faceplate will now come away from this black middle bit. So just gently lift it up and you can now see it's come away. I've kept this like here because I don't want to have to undo all the buttons. But if you want to clean the buttons, because the problem might not be with this bit here, then what you can just do is peel off the membrane and you can see that each of the buttons will pull out and then you can clean them. They are idiot proof as well, so you're going to know which order they're in anyway. But look, can you see that you can't actually put them in the wrong way because they don't go down until you put them in the right way and they will drop into place. So you can give all this a clean and that a clean. So if they're sticky, you can give everything here a clean, including these little buttons up here. Right, but in this instance, we're changing out this board here. So that's the speaker that just dropped out. The speaker fits into this little bit here. When you're putting it back together, just make sure that the prongs these two little bits here that stick up are the same side as these two gold prongs here. So the prongs are to the right hand side of the controller. Right, so this is the thing that we're changing out. So to begin with, I'm just gonna gently just undo it from these little tabs at the back here. See these little tabs? And then little tab down here as well that we just need to work it off from. Also that middle bit here. There, and just here as well. And you can see now that that will lift off. So if that's faulty, you can uh, discard that. And now we can put the new one in. So I'm just feeding it through. You see this little bit here? I'm feeding it through that hole just here. So feed it through and everything should lock into place again with the little uh, the little tabs that are sticking up around the place. So just work them in. There we go. Basically, you can see they're just carbon. They're just carbon contacts and the carbon on here shorts between. So each button will have two tracks go into it. And then when you press this here, that carbon there shorts against the two tracks. So the controller knows that the button's been pressed because the two tracks have been shorted. Okay, so that's on there like so. Now we just need to gently turn it over without breaking these wires. And again, on these bits here, we just need to push them in. So you see those little two posts, they're just gonna clip on there. And there, and that means then that's gonna line up nicely with the contacts on the board here. So you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten contacts there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's all it is. Right, so now we've done that, we just have to put everything back together again. So first of all, let's bring this over. Right, so now we need to put this back onto here. It's a little bit fiddly but you see for the touch pad at the top, that needs to go through that hole there. It always wants to just sit up there, has to go through this hole here. So line that bit up first, like so. And drop it into place. Okay, let's get a couple of screws in it and then see if all the buttons feel like they're pressing nicely. And then we can do up the rest of the screws. When you're screwing into plastic, uh, these two ones are the two silver ones. When you're screwing into plastic, it's best just to go the wrong way, just to, to begin with, so it finds the same thread. It kind of sits down into the same thread that it was in originally. So now let me just have a feel. Yeah, they feel okay. These two don't feel good, but that's because the rest haven't been done up yet. But uh, all the rest feel fine. Black screw in here. And here. And now we need to get the speaker, making sure that the two prongs are on that side there, the same as these ones here. Now we need to put this board back in, but making sure all the ribbon cables are out of the way. Including the one down the bottom. So that one, that one, that one, and this one here. And that should clip back into place there. 
And there, right now, let me fill the buttons again. Yeah, they're all working. Yeah, feels good. Okay, now we have to put all the ribbon cables in. So this one here's got a little line on it, so you can push it in. All the ribbon cables have like a hard plastic thing attached to them, so it makes it easy to push them in. So pushing it in there until the line meets the connector. And now with these ones, can you see these little ears sticking out? There and there and there and there and also down here. The ears have to go right the way down to the top of the connector. So pushing it in there until the ears are by the connector. And that one there. So now we have to put this bit on with that tiny little ribbon cable. So what I'm doing is, you see the black and the red wires, I'm just pushing them up so they go above these bits here to keep them out of the way. And put that roughly into position, like so. And now let's put the ribbon cable in before we put the screw in. This ribbon cable is quite awkward, this one. There you go, but it's gone in. Tweezers will probably help you on that one there. Again, that's got ears, so push it all the way down until the ears meet the plastic connector that's on the board up the screw there and now we need to pop the battery back in you can only go in one way do it so the black wire is at the top of the controller so don't do it so the red wire is up top that will be the wrong way around black wire is up top again it will only go one way don't force it if it doesn't feel right something's not right fit in nice and easy and just clip down I'm going to do the flat side of the battery you can see it's kind of chamfered curved up top flat side of the battery on the bottom there, curve it up top, and then I'm just gonna tuck those wires, they've already gone in there, but just under that connector, that little black tab just there. Now we can put this on. So we're gonna put it on the top bit first. So going on from here, like so, and click it all into place. You can hear now that's clicked nicely. Give it a quick feel. In fact, you can see it's already come to life. That feels good, that feels good, that feels good, and they feel good. So now we have to do up the four screws again, here, here, and here, and here. Okay, they're done up. Now we've got to put the faceplate back on, ears in first, and then it will just hinge down. So put it in this way first, into those empty triangle bits here and here. and it will all click into place. And lastly, don't forget that bit there. And you can see how nice that is. Now, when it comes to these bits, nice and easy, just line up the L1 with the L2 and keep kind of wiggling it around, putting it in and out until it just drops in. We do have to make it click in a minute, but just to make sure it is in the correct location. If you put it in the wrong way there, can you see that R1 doesn't read correct with R2? So we need to make sure that R1 reads the same way as R2. Basically, it's so they're next to each other. And just keep moving it around until it sits home. You can see there that it's almost in now by just uh, resting it there. And now click in and click in. And that's it. Now they are fully seated. All the buttons should now work fine. And you can see the controller has come to life. So that's it. It's nice and easy to replace these. You will be able to buy these things off places like eBay. So that is it for this video. Hopefully that will have fixed your problem and hopefully you found that useful. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and I will hopefully see you all very soon. Take care.